I recently upgraded my 2006 Sportster to uh, a 1250 Hammer Performance kit. I got uh, the 1250 cylinders and pistons. I uh, had them do the smash porting on my heads. I got their uh, new push rods and their 560 cams. Uh, McCuney 45 carburetor and a Daytona Twintech TC88A ignition module uh, to change the timing. Uh, put it all together and was blown away when my speedometer uh, just went went through the roof. And I could tell the bike had more power, but I was not going that fast. Uh, something was wrong. And so I started doing a little digging, and it turns out that Sportsters, um, depending on the year, um, have an electronic speed sensor that communicates with the ignition module. And there's a number on the ignition module uh, that has to do with the frequency of that speed sensor that has to be correct for your gearing and your gear model of bike in order for your odometer and your speedometer to read correctly. So to make that correction, you have to get Daytona Twintex PC Link cable and install some software on a laptop computer and plug it into that ignition module and change that number so that the math will be done correctly on your bike's computer and make your speedometer and odometer read correctly. And this video will show you how to hook up your ignition module uh, on the bike and install the software and use the cable to adjust those settings. All right, now replacing your ignition module on your Sportster is pretty easy. All you got to do is get your seat off first. The ignition module is mounted right here underneath the seat. To take the factory one off, you just take off these two bolts, unplug this wire harness here, and swap out the factory one for your uh, twin cam TC88A or TC88 um, ignition module right here. This one is a TC88A, uh, so you can just go ahead and bolt that down. Now, in order to be able to tune the bike and change your settings and stuff like that uh, with it mounted on the bike, then you're going to have to install this white piggyback wire um, from this wiring harness down to your diagnostic input. To get that piggyback wire installed, you'll have to remove this uh, friction plate this orange piece here and this little rubber insulator it's no big deal just get a pair of pliers and pull it out with that friction plate pulled out you can see that the female end of the piggyback wire goes into this wire um, connector now it's important you put it into pin number two which when this wire harness is plugged into your ignition module on top will be the second one from the left on the top row right up here. I already have mine installed. All you got to do is put the female end of the white wire into that hole uh, by pulling out this brown wire that was already in there and tape up the end of that so that there's no kinds of short circuits or anything like that and just tuck it back into this this sheath here but anyways you plug your white wire into hole number two push it all the way in oh and one more thing to get that brown wire out there's a little black plastic uh, clip in there that's holding it in place just stick a skinny screwdriver in there and pull it towards the middle to release the pressure on that brown wire and then you can pull the brown wire out and then just make sure that when you put the white wire back in that that little black plastic clip pops back into place to hold it in there that way if you're tugging and pulling on this the white wire doesn't come out and then it's as simple as putting the orange plastic friction plate back in there to hold them all steady and basically that friction plate 
uh, puts pressure on those black plastic clips in there to keep all these wires in place. Um, all it is is a, is a plastic wedge that makes everything fit snug. So put that back in there and then wrap the little rubber insulator around the edge. And it should look like this when you get it put back together. So then take the white piggyback wire. I ran mine under the frame here. Down under where the battery cover is, alongside my battery down here to your USB diagnostic plug. Now if you look inside the plug, uh, these have male ends, which your white piggyback wire should have on this end if you put the right one inside the connector up here. There is actually only one way to hook it up. Um, there's a green wire, a gray wire um, on this side, a black wire up here, and then there was an open hole, um, the only hole that the piggyback wire could go into right there. So to get that in, very similar, you got a little uh, friction style plate, this green piece of plastic. Um, you don't need to go buy a J-hook or anything like that like they uh, describe. You can either bend the tip of a wire coat hanger. I just used a small Allen wrench to put it in there and pull that out to uh, release the tension. You insert the white wire from the back side, get it flush with these other pins here, uh, push it all the way in, and then reinsert that green piece of plastic to hold them all in place. Now that your ignition module is wired, it's time to get your PC link and your software ready. So you'll need this USB interface with the switch moved over to the appropriate setting. My ignition module is the TC88A. So just slide the switch on top over to that position instead of TC88. You'll need the software disk and the USB cable. So first things first, let's get your laptop ready to work by putting the CD-ROM in. Make sure that you do not hook up the USB interface yet. You want to get the driver installed off of the disk before you hook up the USB interface. My laptop is a little bit old, so it runs on Windows 7. Um, if you have an updated version of Windows, it might be a little bit different for you, but uh, this is how I adjusted the settings on my computer. First, go to computer, Go to your CD-ROM drive, double-click that, ignore this, it'll try to adjust your settings and make Internet Explorer your default browser and stuff like that, just close that. And the first thing you want to do is go over to Software. And it gives you different options. Um, it has the driver for fuel injected bikes. My bike is a 2006, the last year that they still had carburetors. So scroll down here, and there it is ignition systems for carbureted motorcycles. There's the USB driver. That's coming off of the CD-ROM. Click on that. And it's already saved on my computer. Um, so I'm not going to install it right now. But just go through the, the, the setup. You can either run it off of the CD-ROM or you can, you can save it to your laptop. But install that driver from this disk. Once you have that driver installed, 
go ahead and connect the USB interface to the USB cable and plug the USB cable into your laptop. Once you have the USB interface plugged into your laptop, you have to figure out which COM it is. Uh, that way you can recognize it using the software when you hook it up to the ignition module. So again, on Windows 7, click Start, go to Control Panel, go to System and Security, then over here to Device Manager. When you get to Device Manager, you'll see down here on this list, uh, Ports, COM, and LPT. Click on that, and then it'll tell you that the USB serial port, which is your USB interface for your ignition module, is COM3. So remember that and just remember plug in your USB interface into the same USB slot on your laptop if you have multiple slots uh, just to avoid any issues. So the laptop rec recognizes the interface and it's COM3. Okay, so let's go back to uh, our menu from our CD-ROM We'll click on software again. Now we're looking for the actual program to uh, upload and download the maps and, and adjust your other settings. So we'll go back down to carbureted motorcycle again. If you have a fuel injected bike you can use one of those others, um, but mine's carbureted. So there's the driver, we already did that. And then they've got a couple options down here. Here's Windows software. I'm using Windows. And then they've got PC Link Evo software, PC Link TC88 software. I need the PC Link TC88 software that works with the PC Link cable. So you click on that. Again, I've already installed mine, so I'm not going to go through the process, but basically all you do is follow the prompts and save it to your laptop. Okay, so now you have your ignition module bolted back down uh, where it's supposed to go under the seat. You've got your wire harness here connected with the white piggyback wire running down to this USB diagnostic plug that's connected properly. You've got your PC Link USB interface plugged in to your laptop um, using the same USB port uh, that you did earlier when you identified the COM. And then, very important, switch your key on the ignition to on and make sure that your switch says run. If you don't flip that switch, none of this will work. But don't hit start. So now the bike is connected to your laptop. Go over here to where you installed the PC Link software and open it up. It'll come to this blank screen here, and at the top you've got File, Edit, Communications. First off, cl click Communications, and then go down to Port Setup, and make sure that your port is correct. They've got a whole list of them here. Mine was COM3, remember? So select COM3. Yours might be something else but uh, select the one that corresponds with the with the com that you identified earlier click OK 
and here's where you can start getting fancy. Um, you can import uh, maps and tables that you've downloaded from somewhere on the internet or something like that. Um, what I did since I'm using the, the manual adjustments on the uh, TC88 to adjust my uh, timing, just click download from EEPROM. That basically means download from your ignition module. It'll give you this little box here. It tells you which program's running. Click OK. And there it is. There's my map um, as it sits on my ignition module. So if you don't want your mileage getting uh, artificially high or your speed reading artificially high, you got to make sure the number's right. And to do that, go over here to Edit, Edit Module Parameters, and it'll automatically select flash the advanced tables unselect that don't do that on this uh, uh, module parameter setting you can adjust the cranking revs so that your bike uh, delays starting until after one or two cranks uh, if you've got high compression um, but down here where it says VSS frequency that's where you need to change the number if your speedometer is wrong. Now, um, Daytona has um, some instructions on their page that has a table. This number changes because of the gearing in the transmission. So, for a 2006 Sportster, the value is 1682. That's kind of fuzzy, but Anyways, you put 1682 in there and click OK. And then if you need to, I've already done this, um, so I don't need to do it again. But once you get the settings the way you want them, once you have the map that you want, which I'm just going to use the same same map that was on the TC88 uh, for now. Maybe later I'll get fancy and, and download some other stuff. But I'm um, going to use that. But with those updated... Um, module parameters you go back to communications and then upload to EEPROM which is your ignition module and when you click that it'll upload the new settings and instantly your bike will run differently so that's how you do it